Hello and welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Today we will be covering UK criminals who have been found guilty of committing a serious crime and have been sent to jail. While serving time, criminals insist they are innocent and have written out to the public to share their stories. Firstly, we look at William Gage. So, who is William Gage? Mr Gage was jailed for life and ordered to serve a minimum of 20 years in prison. Mr Gage has always protested his innocence and lost his two previous appeals to overturn his conviction for murder. Both were rejected at the Court of Appeal in Edinburgh and Glasgow, Scotland. Mr Gage, 40, was found guilty of shooting 30-year-old Justin McElroy six times as he returned to his family home in Cambers Lang in March 2002. Mr McElroy was shot repeatedly as he returned home with his pregnant wife, Tracy. Mr Gage's trial heard the businessman was murdered outside his home in Cambers Lang, Acacia Way. The court was told that Mr McElroy had been leading a double life and had a conviction for a drug offence. While Mr McElroy appeared to be working in his family business, he was also said to be mixing with drug dealers and heavily involved in the heroin trade. Undercover police were said to have been keeping a watch on Mr McElroy for three years prior to his murder. Mr McElroy's murder was supposed to have been ordered because he owed a drug debt of approximately £50,000. Mr Gage's appeal sought to convince five judges at the Court of Criminal Appeal in Edinburgh that Mr Gage did not get a fair trial and was the victim of mistaken identity. Mr Gage also challenged claims that a burnt out Saab car which prosecutors said was a getaway vehicle was used in the shooting. Mr Gage also claimed that there were substantial inconsistencies in evidence about the clothing which was said to link him to the shooting by traces of DNA and firearm discharge residue. Gunshot residue, also known as cartridge discharge residue, gunfire residue or firearm discharge residue is residue deposited on the hands and clothes of someone who discharges a firearm. It is principally composed of burnt and unburnt particles from the explosive primer, the propellant and possibly fragments of the bullet, cartridge case and the firearm. A graphic representation of the GSR left on a target when fired upon varying ranges. Law enforcement investigators test the clothing and skin of people for gunshot residue to determine if they were near a gun when it was discharged. Gunshot residue can travel over 3 to 5 feet from the gun. At its furthest distance, only a few trace particles may be present. Judge Lord Hamilton, sitting with Lords Reed, Carloway, McKay and Nimmo Smith, rejected Mr Gage's appeal. Their written ruling stated, Related criticisms can undoubtedly be made of the evidence in each of these strands, but when the evidence is looked at as a whole, the case against the appellant was, in our view, compelling. The Lords added that they were not persuaded the trial against Mr Gage was actually unfair. Mr Gage went on to protest his innocence against the court's ruling. The decision concluded, in all circumstances, this appeal must be refused. After telling Mr Gage his appeal had been rejected, there were shouts heard from the public gallery. The fight goes on and keep your head up. Speaking outside the court, Mr Gage's solicitor, Jim Keegan said, For eight years, William Gage has protested his innocence and we will continue to do so. He is deeply disappointed by the decision. Once we have an opportunity to read the judgment, we will consider whether to seek appeal to the Supreme Court. William Gage, 34 at the time, was jailed for life for shooting of 28-year-old Justin McElroy in Cambers Lang in 2002. Appeal judges in Edinburgh had told Mr Gage in advance his appeal would be refused. They were due to give a final decision but were halted by an outburst from Mr Gage who said he had not had a fair hearing and his lawyer had simply let him down. After Mr Gage sacked his lawyer Mr Keegan, Judge Lord Hamilton agreed to give him two weeks to find a new representative. Claiming to have been misrepresented, Mr Gage said, As far as I am concerned, I have not had my appeal, as my solicitor was obviously working for the other side. Mr Gage had failed to explain when asked why he had not raised this concern before. 
Lord Hamilton said the court had completed its written judgment and ordinarily the appeal would be refused. Lord Hamilton added, In view of the unusual circumstances of this case, the court is prepared to afford you a short period of time with a view to getting additional legal advice. The judge warned Mr Gage that any written evidence should be logged well in advance of the 9th of February. Mr Gage, from Hillhead in Glasgow, was convicted of killing a millionaire's son who was returning home to his pregnant wife. Widow Tracy McElroy later told a trial that she would always remember the staring eyes of the hooded assassin who shot her husband five times as Mr McElroy stepped out of his Mercedes. Mr Gage has continued to protest his innocence since he was jailed for the high profile shooting in March 2002, claiming he was the victim of mistaken identity. Mr Gage's campaigns for freedom has attracted a number of supporters in and around Glasgow. Mr Gage claimed that the trial heard evidence which cast doubt on the certainty of Mrs McElroy's identification. Solicitor Jim Keegan, who represented Mr Gage before being sacked, told an earlier appeal hearing the Crown case was peppered with inconsistencies. Trial Judge Lord Emsley, describing the jury's guilty verdict in his report to the appeal court, said, what is clear, however, is that there were exceptional difficulties to overcome if such a verdict was to be reached. Lord Hamilton gave Mr Gage a further two weeks to talk to his new lawyer. After a brief hearing in Edinburgh, solicitor Amar Anwar said he would be taking on the case. It is unfortunate that we claim to have the best justice system in the world, yet innocent men like William Gage continue to be incarcerated, Mr Anwar said. The original murder trial in Glasgow heard that Mr McElroy was murdered over a £50,000 drug debt. After the fatal shooting, it was revealed that the businessman had been living a double life. Mr McElroy was said to have been dealing heroin and a detective from the Scottish Drug Enforcement Agency told a trial that Mr McElroy had been a target for surveillance for three years. Just days before his death, Mr McElroy was approached by a mystery man who warned him to pay the money that he owed. Hours after a visit to Perth prison to see two inmates, Mr McElroy was gunned down as he stepped from his car outside his home in Acacia Way. Mr Gage's new representation, Mr Anwar, told appeal judges that while the jury was trying to make up their minds, they had asked to see phone records and a diary kept by a girlfriend who backed up Mr Gage's alibi. But the court also heard that DNA tests linked clothing to Mr Gage. They had been found in a partly burned white Saab in Easter House, thought to be the getaway car. The cagoule and trousers also revealed traces of firearm discharge residue. Lord Hamilton said that the Court of Criminal Appeal intended to reject the arguments put forward on behalf of Mr Gage, but would not finally decide the appeal. Now we move to the letter sent directly from Mr Gage himself. It was recently announced that William Gage's appeal against the conviction of murder had been denied. This judgment is a travesty of justice, which relies on circumstantial evidence. It is inconceivable that the evidence, the burden of proof led at the trial, can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Mr Gage has any involvement with the shooting of Justin McElroy. There is no direct evidence that connects Mr Gage with the shooting at Acacia Way in Cumbersland. They are keeping a man locked up in what can only be described as a spirocious innuendo and not facts that should be used in a court of law. To continue to maintain that a white car found in Easter House is linked to William Gage via a DNA sample found on particles of the clothing in the boot of the car. There were also two other unidentified DNA samples found on the clothing in the car as well. They allege that eight particles of firearm discharge residue was found on particles of the clothing. This shows that the white car was involved with a gun crime. And as no reporting of a gun crime involving a white car, then this shows that this car must be tied to the shooting of Justin McElroy. More importantly, there are a number of problems with this argument first. The appeal court accepts that the FDR was a common type and similar to the FDR found at the scene of the crime. Similar means that it is not the same, therefore the eight particles did not come from the gun that shot Justin McElroy. The worst part of the appeal court and Crown's argument is the fact that they maintain that eight particles prove a gun crime. 
This is an absurd assumption, as one shot would release thousands of particles, never mind five shots that killed Justin McIlroy. According to Dr. John Lloyd, former house office forensic scientist said, when a gun is fired, the gun leaves behind thousands and thousands of mini particles. But only six were found on the jacket, three on the surface and three particles in the pocket. It is more likely that the lack of FDR shows it has come from cross-contamination. Even in the likes of the USA, a number of states will not allow the use of FDR as evidence, as it is highly contaminable. Therefore, there is no proof that this jacket was worn when a gun was fired, and certainly no proof to link it with the gun that killed Justin McElroy. Mr Gage's fight for justice goes on. The quality of evidence presented at trial and now propped up by the Scottish Appeal Court, it is a disgrace and should enrage any intellectually honest person. This case will be going to the Supreme Court and if necessary to the European Court of Human Rights. This is the travesty of justice, that in the 21st century, a man wither in a Scottish prison serving a life sentence that is purely circumstantial. And rather than be interested, Lord Hamilton makes a mockery of justice. Lord Hamilton should hang his head in shame. Messages of support and solidarity can be sent to Mr Gage. His postal address is in the description below. So what are your thoughts about Mr Gage's story and letter to the public? Do you believe he is innocent of his crimes? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for joining us and until next time, stay safe.